Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to calculate the normal force on an object that's on a slope. So first of all, we have to draw in all of the vectors that we know for all of the forces. We already know that this situation is going to have 100 newtons pulling up in this way, but we don't actually know what the mass is yet, but we do know that its weight will pull down from the mass center, like this, and we can call this weight is equal to mass times g, where g is 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, we also know there's going to be a normal force acting on this, and the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface that it's on. So we can go ahead and draw it like this, pointing through the mass center, and it's going to be acting like that. Um, when we get into friction and stuff, this might not always be pointing through the mass center, but for now, for simplicity, uh, we'll draw it that way. But we'll definitely need to calculate normal force when we look at friction in a few videos from now. So, anyways, what we need to do is we only know the value of one of these. So, what we, if we wanted to solve for this being in static equilibrium, we could sum the forces in the x direction and the y direction, and you see we're going to have this normal force with some uh, x component. Here, maybe let's draw this in green. Uh, so the normal force would have some x component and some y component, and this other force up here would have some other x component and some y component. But this is going to be a little tricky, so another thing that we can do is we'll actually just change the axis that we're referencing from. Is it is sort of arbitrary what, what reference points we use or reference directions. So instead we'll call this x prime and y prime. Uh, this is pointing in the direction of the plane and this is pointing normal to the plane. Now when we go and look at this, the only vectors that we're going to have to break down actually is this weight because the normal force, I should label that normal, is already pointing in the y prime direction. This red force is pointing in the x prime direction, the negative x prime direction. So the only one we have to resolve into components here is weight. So we can draw weight. Um, we'll actually draw it like this, a little squiggly, but it's going to be pointing that way in the negative y prime direction, and its x prime component will be like this. Okay, so how would we solve for these? Well, we know that this angle here will be 30 degrees. And if you're not sure why that is, here, we can actually go up here. So if we have an axis like this, okay, uh, then we'll call this, you know, this x and y, or whatever, it doesn't even matter. If we just have a cross like this, um, if you want to rotate at 30 degrees, so we'll go ahead and we'll put it back on top of itself, and we're going to rotate at 30 degrees so it matches like our angle. Um, here we go. We wanted it to look like that. Okay, so if you rotate it up 30 degrees, and now we can draw on here. Uh, so we want to represent this angle, so we'd say, well, we've rotated our axis 30 degrees. And now if you rotate this one up 30 degrees, then this one here has to be 30 degrees as well. Likewise, this one's 30, and this one's also 30. The rest of them would all be 60 degrees. So that's kind of where this, this logic comes from, that you can quickly make that assumption. Another thing that you can do, uh, if you're stuck on a test and you can't remember you know, what this angle is, if this one's 30, what I like to do is I would point my thumb, kind of put my, my palm on the page, and point my thumb down in the negative y direction with my four fingers pointing this way. And if you rotate your four fingers up 30 degrees, then your thumb will come out 30 degrees too. That's kind of just a good way to keep track of the angles as well if you're, you know, if you're in a bind. So anyways, so we want to calculate the x prime direction, or the x prime magnitude of our weight vector here. So we'll have this one is equal to um, mg times sine of 30. And the negative, uh, the one that points in the negative y direction, negative y prime, sorry. And you know, you can even write it here, this was y prime, that was x prime. So anyways, this one here will be mg cos 30. So now what we can do is we'll solve for our force balance in the x prime direction and the y prime direction. So first of all, we can write sum of forces, x prime is equal to zero, and sum of forces in y prime is equal to zero. And this gives us two dimensions uh, where the force is balanced to zero, so this object will definitely be in static equilibrium. 
So let's first of all solve for the x prime direction. So we'll have negative 100 plus mg sine 30. And we can even write this 9.81 sine 30 is equal to 0. And I'm sorry if you can hear that wind in the background. It's a really windy day. So when we look at this, the only unknown we have is m, so we can put m is equal to 100 over 9.81 times sine 30. And if you just go and calculate this, we will have our mass is going to be equal to 20.4 kilograms. And we wanted to solve for the normal force, so we just need to move this stuff over. I'm kind of running out of space. <clears throat> And so now what we want to do is we just want to use our, our force balance in the y prime direction. So sum of forces in y prime is equal to zero. So we will have negative mg cos 30 plus, now our normal force member was going in this direction in the positive y direction, plus n is equal to zero. So if we just move this stuff over to the other side, we'll have n is equal to 20.4 times 9.81 times cos 30. And when you calculate that, we'll find our normal force is going to be equal to 173 newtons. And it's actually going to be pointing uh, in this direction here, which is 60 degrees off of a regular x, off of the horizontal or the x-axis, or you can just, you know, reference it to, uh, you know, or you could say in the y prime direction. Sort of however you want to answer that, but make sure that your teacher knows on your test that it's pointing in this direction. So if you want to write, you know, a regular x and y axis, you can say it's pointing 60 degrees off the horizontal or it's just pointing in the y prime direction.